Next Radio with Broadcast Bionics, innovative solutions for creative people. Good afternoon. Wait, I tell you what, uh, coming down on the train today, um, I'm still on Darlington Station and Sir John Hall gets on with me. It was just for those non-footballing people, he was the, uh, the chairman of Newcastle United. And then at York, the Archbishop of York gets on and sits next to Sir John Hall. So I thought, well, it's downhill from now, isn't it? Although I, I did see Mark Goodyear and Rob Jones in, so <laughs> we do some, have some of the radio legends in today. So I'm doing a countdown, so if I was going to do a countdown, uh, forgive this, Mark, but um, the eponymous countdown presenter was Fluff Freeman, and um, he was such a fantastic influence on me and uh, a great inspiration as well. Uh, so I'm going to do the top 20 traits of great radio presenters. But what qualifies me for this, I hear you say. Well, I've been around a long time. I was a presenter for just under 20 years. I've been a program director for about 15 years. Uh, there was an overlap in there. I haven't been around that long. Uh, this is circa 1983. Boy, boy, was I good looking, wasn't I? A youthful guy. Just got on breakfast before I got breakfast show eyes. And uh, over the years, I've come into contact with some of the greats of British radio, American, Australian, some really top-notch radio presenters. And these are my observations, uh, what I've picked up on how they conduct themselves. So at number 20, great radio presenters can be relied upon in a crisis. They control their stress. They don't blame others when things go wrong. Does this ring any bells? And they don't bring moods or trouble into the studio. So you, you get up at 10 to 4, you chip over the dog sick, the missus isn't speaking to you, the car won't start, it's absolutely pissing it down. When the red light comes on, everything in your world is rosy. You don't bring that stress into the studio, you leave it at the studio door. They're well-read, but they don't pretend to be what they aren't. It's important to know what's going on in the world, what's going on around you, what's going on in your community. And if you're false and if you pretend, you'll get caught out. They listen to the station. This is pretty obvious. I won't name the station. There was a station I worked on as a presenter for quite a few years, and I didn't really like the station. <laughs> I had to force myself to listen to the other shows. Um, but it's necessary. You do need to know what's going on on your station. Number 17, they always pre-read and then they re-read scripts before putting them on the air. How obvious is this? My golden rule, read it in your head, read it out aloud, then read it on the air. And then you've got a good chance of getting it right. At number 16, they're never sexist, racist, or bigoted on the air. Now, that doesn't mean you have to be a saint. Although, I think Simon Templer and Roger Moore was the best saint. Um, but you do have to exist in, a, in an environment now that is very politically correct. So you've got to be aware of that, and you've got to be conscious of how you say what you want to say. And number 15, good presenters prepare for their program and do the paperwork afterwards. Now, when that picture was taken of me in the 1980s, we used to have to do all our PRS and everything during the show. And it was like a badge of honor if you got all your paperwork done before the end of the show. And it was a pretty dumb thing, really, because it meant we weren't concentrating on the main thing, which is what we were going to say. So competition winners, promotions, Things you have to do for the commercial team, make sure you, you sort it all out when you come off the air. Has anyone heard of Newton Aycliff? <laughs> I'm not surprised. Um, it's where I was born and brought up, and it was a, a new town that was built after the war. It's a concrete jungle. It's not very pretty, but it's where I'm from. So I'm proud of where I'm from, and I think, I'm sure everyone is. You're proud of where you come from. You're proud of your roots. But it's really important on the air that you're hometown proud. Now, when you move to another city and you start broadcasting in another city, that becomes your hometown. 
and you become hometown proud of the city that you're broadcasting from. They can laugh at themselves and they often do. You know, self-deprecation is one of the greatest things that you can have as a presenter. And the more that you laugh at yourself, the more the audience will laugh at you. And the more that they'll laugh along with you as well. And the more laughter in the studio, the more that the, the listeners will enjoy what you're doing and you'll entertain them. They're always well turned out and on time. I put my tweed jacket on today. This is Elvis Duran. It's a rather loud jacket. But I put it up because, I mean, he does look quite dapper. And maybe he's lost over 100 pounds in the last nine months. So he's looking really good. And, you know, we are in showbiz. It's a branch of showbiz. So you've got to look the part. It doesn't matter when you're just on the air, no one's going to see you. But when you're out, if you're seeing people, uh, like the members of the community, listeners, if you're doing some work with the sales team, make sure you look the part. They promote and support their fellow presenters on and off the air. This is a great picture. This is the, the first day that Grimmy took over the breakfast show on Radio 1. And all the other jocks turned out uh, on the show early in the morning to support him. And I thought that, that says so much about the spirit at Radio 1 now. It's a team spirit. And if you can get your presenters to play as a team, they'll be 10 times stronger. And strong teams win. It's as simple as that. And that's a bloody strong team. They're always out in the community. It's really important that you get out there whenever there's something big going on in your town or your city, something where you need to find out what it's all about. Get out there and make sure that the public know that you're out there as well. So carry a sign around like this and then they'll know. Number nine. They're friends with the sales department. It took me ages to find the right picture for this. Um, most of the stations that uh, I worked on, a lot of the stations that I set up when I was at GMG Radio, we used to put the programming floor on the bottom with the studios and the newsroom and the presenters and the PD. And then we put the sales on the next floor, the sponsorship and promotions, admin, the managing director and everything like that. And they never used to mix. And it's really important now. Again, the team is not just the on-air team. It's the whole radio station. And actually, it went, I worked at Talk Radio in the 90s, and we were all on one floor. So the only station I've worked on, though, everything was all on one floor. And the kitchen was right in the middle. And people used to mix. And they used to talk. And they used to come up with ideas just because they were mixing together. So be friends with the sales department. They're keen to learn new skills. I mean, most radio presenters are quite geeky. You know, they're going to have the latest iPhone, they're going to have the latest iPad, whatever. Um, but now the technology in a radio studio is phenomenal. Everything's digital. There's new things coming along. There's more screens in there than you know what to do with. So it's important that you know what everything does, and it's important that you learn. And you keep learning. And you don't just show and go. Again, the days of turning up at five minutes before the show and uh, then pulling out the car park on the news in jingle for the next guy, they're gone. Um, that was in the 80s. That, not, no more. Show and go doesn't exist anymore. They share some of their life with their listeners. So I put a picture of Howard Stern up because he's renowned as being this outrageous shock jock. But actually... If you do listen to Howard, he does something outrageous about once every five or six weeks to get a bit of press coverage. Most of the time, he just talks about what's going on in his life. And a lot of his life goes on in the studio. But a lot of his life goes on with his family as well. But everyone knows if they come into contact with Howard, it could end up on the air. And that's really important, that you make sure that your family, your friends, they're aware of this, so I always used to say, don't tell me something if you don't hear it on the radio tomorrow. Because it could well end up on the radio tomorrow. Because presenters who share their lives with their listeners become closer to their listeners. Their listeners feel as though they're one of their best friends. <coughs> Number six, they paint pictures with their links. Nice portrait, you think? 
I used to put a picture of footballers playing football up on this. Because actually, the most difficult thing to do in radio, I think, is sports commentary, or football commentary in particular. 22 players on the pitch. You're trying to communicate where the ball is, who's doing what, when they're going to do it, what the position is, and, and how they're all doing. Um, now, if you can bring the traits of what a great football or sports commentator does to your everyday show and paint pictures about life, paint pictures about what you're talking about, it brings everything to life. Because you know what they say? I know it's, it's trite, it's old-fashioned, but the pictures on radio are better than TV because they're in the listener's head. And if you're good at painting pictures, then you will have a great show. They know their audience. They watch the TV shows that are on at the moment that all the listeners are watching. They go to the movies to see the latest big movie. You know, the new James Bond movie is coming out in a few weeks. You know, presenters have got to go and see it. Whether they like it or not, go and see it because that's what people are going to be talking about. And they go to the places and they do the things that their audience do. Now, I'm not absolutely certain that Steve Wright does this. <laughs> But he certainly comes across as though he knows exactly what his listeners are bothered about at the moment. They do do stuff about the hot TV shows at the moment. They do stuff about the latest movies, the latest trends, the latest social media activity that's going on. So it's really important that you would across all of that. They use social media effectively to stay relevant to their audience. This has moved right up my top 20 traits uh, because it's become more and more important about remaining relevant to your audience. Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, Snapchat, whatever the latest thing is, you've got to be aware of it, you've got to be involved in it. But let's not forget, Facebook is still king. And if you're not doing stuff on Facebook effectively, then you're not doing your job right these days. You've got to be involved in social media. So the top three, the number three, they talk to one person and not the audience. I used to have a, a police sergeant came on my show uh, when I was working in BBC local radio and he insisted, because he did a bit of local TV as well, and uh, he, was, he was called Jed. Anyway, so I used to say, Jed, when you come on, please don't say hello listeners because it's not it's, we talk one to one you say, yes so you've got that I quite understand so he comes on he says hello viewers <laughs> he didn't say hello listeners but he'd been doing a bit of TV it's important it's a one to one relationship it's a very personal it's probably the most personal relationship because you're talking straight into someone's head straight into their brain and they listen to, this is number two, they listen to snoops of their own show regularly. It used to be really easy. We used to have the cassette snoop machine down by the side of the desk, take it out, stick it in the car. When you're driving home, have a listen to a few of your links. You'd be amazed at what you pick up. Well, you, you can do it on a memory stick now. Uh, it's, it's dead easy, or you can you know, download it onto your iPhone, listen to it in the car. Listen back to your own show every day. Listen to what you do. You'll identify those verbal crutches that keep coming into your conversation. You'll identify all sorts of things before the PD does when he does the snoop session with you. It's far better to beat the PD to the punchline. And the final thing is, this is fairly obvious, and um, uh, um, you've got to be really careful about this, but I really believe in this. You've got to have something to say, and you've got to be unafraid to say it. And... I, you know, I sit in a lot of coaching sessions with presenters and, well, I didn't have anything to say. I feel like saying, well, don't be in radio because that's what we do. We go on the air and we talk. So, if, you know, the old adage, if you haven't got anything to say, don't say it. You should never be in that position. You should always have something to say. That's what radio is all about. And when I say don't be afraid to say it, I don't mean you have to be outrageous or, you know, ridiculous or... Uh, you have to use profane language or anything like that. You have to exist in the community that you live in. You have to exist in the environment that we all live in now. So you have to be careful about what you say. 
You have to stick to the regulations. You know, you, you've got to know what the Ofcom regulations are. But you've got to have something to say and have the chutzpah to go out on there and say it. So that's my top 20 traits. We're going to count them down right now. The top 20 traits of great radio presenters. And at number 20, they control stress and moods and they can be relied upon in a crisis. At number 19, they're well read and they're not false. At number 18, they listen to the rest of the radio station that they work on. In at 17, always pre-read and re-read scripts. At 16, they're never racist, sexist or bigoted. At number 15, they do their prep before the show and they do their paperwork after the show. So we're at number 14 and they're always hometown proud. At 13, they can laugh at themselves and they often do. At number 12, they're well turned out and they're always on time. At number 11, they promote their fellow presenters and the other shows on the station. So now we're into the top 10. At number 10, they're always out in the community. At number 9, they're friends with the commercial team. At number eight, they're keen to learn new skills and they don't show and go. At number seven, they share their life on air and they're real. Number six, they paint pictures with words. Into the top five and at number five, they know their audience and they live their life. At number four, they're social media savvy. And now we're into the top three. At number three, they talk to one person and not the whole audience. At number two, they air check their own shows. And at number one, they have something to say. Thank you. <laughs>